Hey guys, it's Omer from MLS.com. Do the quick quick news recap of all major MO news and announce the week ending July 22nd, 2019. This episode number 209 of the recap and the first of news this week comes from Estelia and the game's second round of closed beta testing is set to begin on July 30th and will run until August 6th with the game client available to download starting on July 25th. As always with any closed beta, I expect a wipe before full launch sometime in September. Uh, this time around, Estelia will be testing its PvPVE battleground system called Avalon so you can finally get a taste of the game's PvP. I did a first look for this one already and it's definitely not bad. Uh, the Estelia system helps to differentiate it from other MMOs, but given that it's a buy-to-play title, it's a bit of a tough sell. As a free-to-play game, I'd recommend it strongly hands down, but still, it's worth trying in the second round of closed beta testing, only because it'll be free in closed beta 2, and again, that begins on July 30th. Uh, next up, speaking of buy-to-play and free-to-play games, Life is Feudal MMO, the MMO version of Life is Feudal, officially went free-to-play this last week, and up until now, it was buy-to-play and played a lot like Worm Online, which is pretty obscure, but if you haven't heard of it, it's basically a sandbox survival game with MMO-like scale. So think Rust or Ark Survival Evolved, but with larger scale. I expect that it went free-to-play to boost its player-based numbers, and at least in the short term, it seems to be working, as the game went from peaking at about 700 players a day, all the way up to 1,500. If you like these sandbox survival games, maybe give this one a try. Keep in mind, though, it's a much slower paced and more complicated version of Rust, so simply building a base and stuff takes a lot longer. Plus the UI is not nearly as good, but it's going for that MMO scale. I guess it's kind of a bit like a new world and games like that. Uh, up next, and perhaps the dumbest news of the week, a RuneScape player filed a lawsuit against Jagex for muting them in-game without reason. As you probably already guessed, the lawsuit didn't go well and was quickly dismissed in Pennsylvania court. The plaintiff claimed that the muting process in RuneScape violated his human rights and free speech. The judge, of course, ruled that the allegations were implausible, and the First Amendment and Fifth Amendment due process clauses and free speech clauses do not apply to government institutions because it's a private game company after all. So surprise, surprise, game company can ban or mute you for any reason, so don't go ahead wasting everyone's time trying to sue them for it. But it is a pretty interesting story that they actually went ahead and tried that, but of course, it didn't work. Uh, next up, Final Fantasy XIV launched patch 5.01 this last week, which introduced the newest raids to the game titled Eden. I keep in mind though, this is only for the normal mode for the raids, and the Savage mode is to launch, I believe, on July 30th-ish. And also including the update are some balance tweaks to a few classes, but most of the big balance changes in the pipes are set to launch the new Savage raids later this month, so not too much has changed just yet, but again, big changes are coming with the new Savage raids. And there's been some other minor changes too, but the normal raids are the biggest new addition to the game. I uh, personally, I am hyped for the Savage content later this month. I've already completed all the normal mode stuff because it's super easy, but I am excited for raids later this month. Up next, Torchlight Frontiers announced that when they officially launch later this year, it'll be launching with 60 to 80 hours of content, which is definitely not bad for a launch day game. Uh, Torchlight Frontiers is the MO version of Torchlight, and given the franchise's previous success, there's definitely some hype for this one, but I still see the tough road for success because of uh, how big Path of Exile is in the ARPG space. Uh, Torchlight Frontiers is launching later this year on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. The studio behind this one also promises that monetization will be limited to convenience items, and given how fair the, the monetization is in Path of Exile, there's not really much room for them to like, push too much pay to win, otherwise players will all leave and play Path of Exile. Again, no word on the exact launch, but we do know it's coming out later this year. Uh, next up, Elsword Online launched their first major character reboots this week, which rebooted Elsword, Rena, and Eve. Uh, reboots are essentially huge reworks to include changes to balance, abilities, and even animations. Uh, as the first part of a series of updates set to launch in the coming months, so players should expect more character reboots in the months ahead. As always, to celebrate the occasion, there's a bunch of in-game events going on to celebrate. Uh, this is definitely a bit of an oldie. It's an instance dungeon precision hub style MMO, and it's despite its age, it's still fairly popular. Up next, MapleStory 1 is launching its Pathfinder Squadron of Heroes update on July 24th, which introduces a new party quest, new minigames, new adventure tiers, a new hero squad system, and a new themed dungeon. A temporary job uh, Beast Tamer is also open for character creation, and there's a burning event going on to help players level up to 150 quicker. MapleStory remains one of the most successful free-to-play MRPDs in the world, thanks to its success in South Korea. It's also one of the Nexon's biggest games here in the West. I think it was the first mega-popular free-to-play game in the West, and helped kick off the free-to-play revolution. I know it was one of my first free-to-play MMOs at least, and I still go back to it every once in a while to try out all those new classes. If you never played it, now's a good time to play with that burning event going on. Uh, next up, Caravan Stories is North American open beta and launch has been delayed for an indeterminate amount of time as per a tweet on the game's official Twitter account. Uh, the game was set to launch on the PS4 on July 16th, but that clearly didn't happen. No word on how long the delay is, but I can't imagine it'll be too long as the game's not in Asia for over a year already. Uh, no word on a PC launch either. This looks like a strictly console release here in the West, at least for now. Up next, a small bit of a victory lap for Monster Hunter World, as the game hit 13 million copies sold worldwide, making it the most successful Monster Hunter game ever, and one of Capcom's most successful games, period. At the summer of the occasion, players will log in between July 25th and August 29th to get a free item pack in-game. Also, the Iceborne expansion pack is set to launch in September, so there's a lot, a lot of runway left for Monster Hunter World. 
And moving right along, Blade Nacelle previewed its new changes set to launch with the upcoming Roots of Malice up, I would say the launch on July 24th. Uh, with the upcoming update, players will be able to use their PvP gear on their alts. There's also changes to the item upgrading system as players won't need to use Dragon Tokens to evolve various pieces of gear anymore. It's not exactly a huge update, but it'll be launching on July 24th, just a couple of days. Now, Blade Soul, along with Terra and Black Desert Online are really the only true action MMORPGs out there with a persistent world. So if you haven't played all three, honestly, all three are worth checking out. They're definitely one of the better uh, MMORPGs out there, at least on the free-to-play front for, for Terra and Blade and Soul. Uh, next up, the Indian MMORPG Villagers and Heroes launched a Tale of Earth and Sea expansion this last week, which introduced uh, the new Shaman class to the game, as well as a ton of other goodies. The expansion bumped up the game's level cap to 95, added 9 new endgame zones, a new dungeon, a new content scaling system, new talents, ultimates, and more for all the classes, and a lot more. Uh, this is a super indie game with a tiny dev team behind it, but given their size, actually, there's a lot to do in the game. Plus, it's one of the few cross-play MMORPGs available on both PC and mobile, and it's not a nonsense autoplay mobile MMORPG either. There's definitely something here if you can look past its indie look and feel. Our next last of news this week comes from Smilegate regarding Lost Ark, but before you get too excited, no, we don't have any kind of release date for the West yet, but the Korean version of the game is launching its new Assassin class soon, which apparently has been in development for some time now, but it's set to launch later this month. Good to see the Korean version of the game getting updated regularly, but I'm still waiting for a Western announcement. I'm hoping we can announce it for a Western release sometime in Q4 of this year, and hopefully a playable open beta by this time next year. That's just my personal guesstimate and timeline, obviously nothing official, just my speculation. But yeah, anyway guys, that's it for my news this week. I'll see you guys more for the podcast. Later guys.